Good morning, and welcome to St. Joan of Arc Church. Before we begin, I'd like to ask you all to remind you to s silence your cell phones. Our opening hymn is in, and along with all the music, is in the program.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Colin died with Christ, but also rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. On the day of his baptism, Colin was clothed with a white garment that signified him as a child of God and an heir to the kingdom of grace. As we gather at the very beginning of this liturgy, before this altar, his family places on his casket, this funeral pall, as a visible reminder of the dignity he shares in being called a child of God. In life, Colin cherished the cross of Christ. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the firstfruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Colin, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now be attentive to God's word as first proclaimed to us by Cheryl. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord from whom we, for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
Let us now listen to God's word as proclaimed to us by Melanie. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to God. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. 
Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My name is Monsignor Mike Begarin, the pastor here at St. Joan of Arc. And to you, Randy and Karen, Curtis, Nikki, to you and your entire families, my own name on behalf of an, this entire parish community, in the name of President Wilson and Chief Holt from Wayne State, Mayor Duggan and Chief Craig from Detroit, we offer you, and on behalf of all these people that are here, our prayers and sympathies as we come and commend your son, your brother, your fiancé, to the loving hands of God, the Almighty Father. I often look at this mosaic, which depicts the life of St. Joan of Arc. I've often told some of the children in school, if they're bad, they're going to have to count every single piece. But every single piece on that mosaic is important. Every single piece is part of the artist's design for that mosaic. And it doesn't matter whether it's gold or white, purple or red or blue. It doesn't matter what piece or where it is in the mosaic. It's all part of the artist's design. And if any one single piece is missing, it destroys what the artist had intended. Because I'm sure the artist looked up there and saw his design and saw the good that he had created. And he was pleased with what he saw. Every piece is important, big or small, no matter what shape, size, wherever it fits. It's part of the artist's design, his creation. But God has a creation. And that creation includes you and me. It includes the human race. And every single one of us is important as part of God's design of what he saw in creation. We read in the book of Genesis, you know, God created male and female, and he looked at everything he had created and saw good in it. And he was pleased with what he created. We come as a people of God much like that mosaic. It doesn't matter what color we are. It doesn't matter what position we have. It doesn't matter whether we're thin. It doesn't matter what size we are. It doesn't matter. We, the human race, are part of God's design. And God looks at us, no matter what color we are, no matter what shape we are, no matter what we wear, no matter what uniform we put on, and he sees good in us. And my brothers and sisters, if God can see the good in us and see all of us as part of his mosaic, why can't we? The violence has to end. We have to start treating each other as brothers and sisters. We have to take on what God did and what we heard God did in the book of Genesis. To look at his creation and see everything is good. And that's the challenge that we have for us. We have to look at each other in the eye no matter what color we are, no matter what we wear, no matter what uniform we put on, and see good, and see the other as a brother or sister, forming the mosaic 
of God's creation. Today it's Officer Rose that lays before us. Two months ago it was Captain Style. Other officers have died in this community. So an officer killed in Tacoma, officers hurt on the streets yesterday. We have to do something to stop the violence. And all too often we talk about it, and I think we have to do a better job of making it happen. Mother Teresa had a beautiful line, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, now Saint Mother Teresa. Peace begins with a smile. And it's that smile that we give to one another. It's that glance that we give each other as we look each other in the eye and see each other as a brother and sister that can change everything. Mother Teresa had another line I want to quote. So when we make a conscious decision to judge somebody, we've made a conscious decision not to love them. My friends, we have to stop judging. We have to see each other as part of the vast mosaic that the human race is in God's eyes and how good it is. But if we're going to stop the violence, if we're going to bring about peace, we shouldn't bother looking far away. We need to start it ourselves. We need in Mother Teresa's eyes, to begin it with a smile. Because peace does begin with a smile. And that brings me to Colin. You look at any of the pictures, you look at any of the videos, you look at the testimony of the family, Colin loved to smile. And his smile whether it's in the midst of the police force, in the midst of working the streets, whether it's doing whatever he was doing, he loved to smile. And it's amazing to hear the stories over and over and over again how this young man went about doing so much good for so many people. He lifted the hearts of so many people, not only his family, not only his friends, his fraternity brothers and sisters, all his, his blue family in blue, but he also brought smiles to the less fortunate and was always looking out for them. I go to the story of in fifth grade when the school noticed that he was taking special care of some of his special needs classmates on that trip. Even as, a young, even as a young kid, he had his eyes and his heart focused in on doing the mission that God wants us to do, the mission that Jesus wants us to do, to take care of one another. And Colin did that. He made people smile. He went out of his way to do what he could to make people's lives a bit better. And his plans were unfolding. In high school, he decides that he wants to be a police officer. And it's through that decision to become a police officer, going to Ferris, that he meets Nikki, the love of his life. It's there that they form a bond and a friendship. And it's there that Colin is able to give himself in a whole other way and exercise leadership. And then he takes on his leadership role, and you look at all the things that he did with his dogs, training his dogs in so many different ways. I've seen so many pictures of dogs in those, in those videos and those boards. It's amazing there was any room in the house for any of you. He loved his dogs. And I found it absolutely fascinating watching the news yesterday. I think it was Wolverine, was it? Yeah, it was having a hard time coming into Ford Field. 
didn't even want to approach the casket. Pretty fascinating. But he had a great love for his dogs and being able to train them to do incredible things in his line of duty. And what a powerful leadership example he had. He had a passion for whatever he did. It was a passion of love with, in the midst of his family. It was the love that he had for his fiancée. It was the love that he had for celebrating and being present at so many police officers' funerals. The love and passion of being on the police unity tours. Over and over and over again, Colin's heart was all about the other. And respecting the other because of the love that was deep within his heart. And that love that was planted deep within his heart obviously was given to him by God himself through the gift of Jesus, but also planted by the example and the love of his mom and his dad and his brother. Love permeated his life. Having a passion for others permeated his life. What a tragedy it is that his life came to a quick end. Because one person didn't bother to see and look him in the eye and see him as a brother. To not look him in the eye and see him as a part of God's creation and look him in the eye and see him as somebody that was good. But we come to this altar because of the hope that's given to us in Jesus Christ. Even though one person robbed him of his earthly life, no one, absolutely no one, can rob him of the gift of eternal life given to him by Christ Jesus. And that's what we celebrate. You know, any time Colin did an act of kindness for somebody and they went out of his way to thank them, him, he always would have this saying, which I thought was very apropos. Thank you, sir. I wouldn't have it any other way. I love my job. Well, as we thank God for the gift of life, the gift of eternal life, those are also God's words as we thank him. Thank you, God, for this gift. Thank you, God, for this hope given to us in the gift of Jesus, the gift of eternal life. And God's saying back to us, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love my job. My brothers and sisters, our readings today focus in on that gift of eternal life. Focus in on the hope that's given to us as children of God. From the book of the prophet Isaiah, we listen to the author paint a picture, so to speak, of God's holy mountain. At the very top of God's holy mountain, the author speaks about the beauty of what's going to be provided for his people up there. Up there, the web that is woven has been broken. Up there is going to be finest of food, the richest of everything that there is to offer. Up on God's holy mountain, God will destroy death forever. The author is speaking about the beauty of the reality of his kingdom here on earth, but also what awaits us in the kingdom of heaven. And that's that kingdom that Colin is now participating in. It is a kingdom with the richest of food. It's the kingdom of the powerful gift of love, lived every day unconditionally. And we have to do what we can to ascend God's holy mountain each and every single day of our lives. Every step we take, every word we utter, should give us kind of like a climb up the ladder of God's kingdom. Our journey is a journey to the top of that mountain 
where God dwells. So we have to do better at looking into the eyes of the other. We have to do better of doing everything we can to respect the precious gift of everything that God has given us and realize that we're climbing God's holy mountain. And he does all that stuff for us because of his love for us. In today's second reading, St. Paul to the Romans talks about the power of love. To me, St. Paul is an amazing, amazing person. Here you have someone who had absolutely no love in his heart, who was actually persecuting the early church. In fact, he even went as far as to say he was out to destroy the early church. And all of a sudden, because of the gift of love, his heart was open to the power of Christ. And once his heart was open, and he could start seeing things the way God sees things, his life changed. And what does he say? There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Nothing here on earth, no principalities, no powers, not even death itself can separate us from the love of God, given to us through Christ Jesus the Lord. And that love is so powerful. And Jesus in today's Gospel, the great Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus challenges his disciples, he challenges you and me to live a life based on these Beatitudes. To be poor in spirit. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? Is God asking us to be poor? No, he's asking us to empty ourselves and not worry about ourselves, but worry about the other. How blessed are the poor in spirit. The kingdom of God is theirs. When we focus our heart on the other, when we do acts of kindness, when we go out of our way to do what we can to see each other as brothers and sisters and treat people with respect and go out of our way to do acts of kindness like Colin did his entire life, that's being poor in spirit. Blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus gives us so many reasons and examples of how we need to embrace life. And by embracing this type of life and climbing God's holy mountain and realizing that love conquers all things, we're given what we hear as the very last line of today's gospel. Our reward will be great in heaven. And that's just not something that we hope for. That's not just a promise. It's reality. It's reality because of what we believe. It's reality because of what we celebrate around this altar. It's a reality because God made it so through the gift of Jesus. God promised us eternal life. It's a promise given to us through his unconditional love, a love that knows no bounds. And as St. Paul reminds us, there is nothing, not even death itself, can separate us from that love. Not even someone who takes another's life can separate us from that love. And so we thank God. But the beauty of that hope that's given to us in this promise is also the beauty that is given to us by another beautiful saying that we have, and I'll say at the very end of our funeral liturgy, just as Colin is given the gift of eternal life, comes with it the promise that's given to us, that one day we will joyfully greet him again. And the love of God, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. That's God's promise. That's what will happen. And we thank God that he wouldn't have it any other way. Please stand.
So I invite Diane to come forward as we pray the prayers of the faithful. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Please respond to all petitions with hear our prayer. In baptism, Colin receives the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our brother Colin was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the mourners, the family and friends of Colin seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for Colin. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
we stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, our good and good God. As we humbly present you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Colin, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. standing all over the place anyways. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Joan of Arc and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Colin, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Run from the earth, he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God as you are, we shall be like you for all ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace.
For the distribution of Holy Communion, we'll distribute the body of Christ to many different locations. We have eight stations here in church. We have stations out in the gathering space and also in the multi-purpose room where people are seated. We will have a station in the back near what we call the Pieta Chapel uh, where the candles are. And then because of the number of people that are also outside, we will have uh, two Eucharistic ministers outside bringing communion to those who wish to receive communion that might be standing outside on the front lawn. If you are Catholic, simply come forward. If you do not share our Catholic faith or not receiving communion today, we invite you, if you wish, to come forward and simply ask for a blessing. Either verbally or by placing your arms like that, we'll know to give you a blessing as you come forward. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I arise today through the strength of heaven, light of sun, radiance of moon, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of wind, depths of the sea, stability of earth, firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's eye to look before me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me from all who shall wish me against every cruel, merciless power that may oppose my body and soul. Christ with me, Christ Let us stand and pray. Lord our God, you are always faithful and quick to show mercy. Our brother Colin was suddenly and violently taken from us. Come swiftly to his aid. Have mercy on him and comfort his family and friends by the power and the protection of the cross. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I would ask President M. Roy Wilson, the president of Wayne State University, to come forward. It's difficult to find the words to express how sorrowful we are for Wayne State's fallen hero, Sergeant Colin Rose. My wife Jacqueline and I were fortunate to get to know Colin personally. And it's easy to understand how he touched 
so many people. My office has been flooded with words of condolence from members of our campus, from other university presidents and police chiefs, from people of all walks of life across the country who lauded Officer Rose's bravery and grieved his death. Hundreds of people gathered on our campus Tuesday to honor Colin at a candlelight vigil. And yesterday, we saw an outpouring of support at Ford Field. Police officers, many with dogs, students, and faculty from the university that Colin served, citizens from down the street, across the state, and beyond, all gathered to say farewell to this exceptionally brave young man who made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. We will never be able to make up for the loss of Sergeant Rose's life, but we will ensure that his legacy lives on forever. As mentioned at Tuesday's vigil, the university has established an endowed scholarship in Collins' name to ensure that generations of aspiring civil servants like him have the opportunity to pursue their education at Wayne State University. Additionally, as many of you know, Colin was working towards his Master of Arts degree in dispute resolution. He was only one credit short of obtaining his degree. I'm pleased to announce that the university will be awarding him his degree posthumously at our December commencement ceremony in less than two weeks from now. As an alumnus of Wayne State, Colin provides a stellar example of learning and service to every student who wishes to make a difference in this world. And through the Colin Rose Endowed Scholarship, he will continue to do what he did best, help others. We all owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to our uniformed men and women who put themselves at risk in ways we don't even think about, who wade into dangerous situations most of us take pains to avoid. For his courage, his selflessness, and his compassionate connection with the campus and the community he served, we at Wayne State University commend Sergeant Rose with all our hearts, and we wish peace and comfort for his loved ones. I'd now ask Chief Holt from the Wayne State University Police Department to come forward, please. You know, as I look around the church today, I'm reminded how remarkable it is that a man such as Sergeant Colin Rose has such an affluence of so many individuals and groups in the community. Uh, Colin achieved so much in the short time he was in our department, in the short times he was in our lives. Uh, to Sergeant Rose, what really stood out to me is that people always came first. His service as a Wayne State University police officer was his number one priority. He made an impact by serving his community. He made traits like integrity, duty, honor, and service. Those were his guiding principles of life. He continued to strive to do better. He continued to strive for excellence, personality, personally and professionally. If those, any of these points sound familiar to you, especially to our Wayne State Police officer, they are our department's guiding principles. They are the reason Officer Rose earned the honor to serve as a Wayne State Police officer and why he excelled in our department. As I mentioned earlier, as a police officer, that includes a police chief, we're trained to be ready for any incident except one, losing a fellow officer in the line of duty. But Officer Rolls, or Sergeant Rolls, was more than just a fellow officer. He was an excellent officer. He was a cop's cop. I hired Colin five years ago, and was there when he was sworn in as a rookie. He became a unique civil service in every way. As a canine officer, he was among the best. Not just for the university, 
He worked to train canine officers at Wayne State and for other departments around the country. He was simply that good. Colin was known by members of our community as an officer willing to do the difficult things police are trained to do. But he was also known for his compassion, for that big smile he had, and his willingness to help people in need. He was there for kids in the neighborhood, for just running a foot race with them, or to talk about his dogs, which he so loved. He was known on campus by our students and went on trips with them. He also had a great respect for his profession and fellow officers and a deep, deep sense of duty. He always assisted on attending the funerals of other officers all around the state and country. He even named one of his dogs, Wolverine, in honor of a Detroit police officer killed in the line of duty. He would always go the extra mile, and I mean always, to help a student or member of the community because this just wasn't a job. These just weren't his street to patrol. This was his neighborhood. This was his beat. These were his family members. This was his home. He served them all with pride and dedication. And of course, his trademark smile. Early this week, I had the honor of a warning Sergeant Colin Rose a citation for valor. That's very big in our department. We've only had three issues since our exception. He was also promoted to the rank of sergeant, the head of the Wayne State University K-9 unit. Sergeant Rose deserves this recognition for being a great officer, community servant, mentor, and friend. You know, his love for animals went way beyond a professional level, extending also into his personal life. He was a great friend to Detroit Dog Rescue, where his fiancee Nicole worked. And I must add, he was a friend to me as well. I will miss him dearly. Last week was the toughest of my career in Wayne State University, and I'm not alone. We all feel the loss of this man deeply. We heard from officers and agencies all over the country. Tuesday's vigil on campus, Wednesday memorial and visitation at Fort Field, and today farewell. These are testaments to the officer and the man that Colin Worlds was. Simply put, he was special. Everyone who met him knew he was special. Now our nation knows how special Sergeant Rose was too. And so as we pay tribute to this remarkable young man, let us also pay tribute to those closest to him who he's left behind. His entire family, especially his father, Randy, mother, Karen, brother, Curtis, and Nicole, his fiance. We offer you our deepest sympathy for your loss. There's no words that we can say that could console you. Just know that we are hurting too for his ultimate sacrifice and for the sacrifice that you and I are enduring. Last week, I got a letter from one of the many kids in middle school that Sergeant Rose visit, took his dog, talked to him about making better choices. And this one young student asked me to read a statement she wrote for the family. And she says, bravery, bravery is not the absence of fear, it's the action you take in the face of bravery. And when we lose an officer in the line of duty, it's not the agency that just suffers, it's the entire nation. So for that, we are forever indebted to Sergeant Colin Rose for his service, for all that he achieved, for all whom he helped, and for all that he gave, he will never be forgotten. I now invite Chief Craig from the Detroit Police Department to come forward. Good afternoon. I just wanted to say on behalf of Mayor Mike Duggan, the men and women of the Detroit Police Department, uh, to the family, our deepest condolences and sympathy. Uh, this has been a tough time in law enforcement for the past year, year and a half. Over the past 24 hours, 
Several of our officers have been ambushed. Fortunately, they have survived. Past month and a half, including Sergeant Rose, three loss, American heroes here in the city of Detroit. So know that you have an advocate and so many, to the men and women in blue, know that our community, our elected leaders, so many support, so many love you. Continue to fight the good fight. Continue to serve this community with distinction and honor because we love you. And so I just wanted to thank you. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to say a few words. And Sergeant Rose, your memory will continue forever. Thank you. At this time, we would ask those officers that are going to be standing in formation outside to please exit the church. You have the opportunity of exiting over there, or if you're over on that side of the church, enter through there. If you are not going out in formation, uh, we would ask you to go immediately to your vehicle so that we may begin the procession promptly. But as these men and women in blue depart this church, let's show them our support for all that they do for our world.
extent. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we will joyfully greet him again when the love of God, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Colin in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Colin in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us now take our brother to his place of rest. Thanks be to God. <laughs>